as you're watching this, kind of a week and a half ago, we have begun the process of bringing home our little girl. So life at Sunshine Lane, as I know it, is done. So today is my last day in the studio and that feels really really scary and something that I think I've had to just kind of steal myself for and tell myself it's gonna be okay the world is not gonna end I have a few things that I really need to get done before I go off on leave I took part in the super second sale and I sold off loads of seconds items. So I have a ton of orders waiting to be processed and I'm gonna start pulling the seconds items together. This is gonna be a really weird change of pace for me. It's definitely scary times. It's Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new studio vlog and a different kind of vlog today because I'm getting ready to step back and take a little bit of time away from the business and I'm gonna walk you through my last day of trying to get things ready to leave slash handover slash step back from, which feels like a very scary thing. So if you've been following this channel for a while, you will know that I have been talking about starting a family in different ways, shapes and forms on this channel for a very long time now. And I mentioned it earlier in the year in my Q&A video that we were going through the process of trying to adopt. And I am happy to say that we have finally been approved and after lots of stop, start and waiting, it is all go, go, go. So from Monday, so as you're watching this, kind of a week and a half ago, we have begun the process of bringing home our little girl. So life at Sunshine Lane, as I know it, is done, never to be the same again. And that is a very, very scary thing, but it is for all the reasons that we've wanted and therefore you just got to adapt. So this is something that I've kind of been doing in the background for a while now. You will have seen that I hired my mum to work with me two days a week. She started at the beginning of July and I've been training her up so that while I take a step back, she can keep the orders going out of the door so that things aren't interrupted for you and people can still get their lovely goodies. This also explains why in recent vlogs, I have been working like I've never worked before, trying to get as much stuff done as possible before I go off, which has been tricky, but I think the reason for it has kind of been spurring me on. Now, it's kind of been quite tricky to plan because until very recently, we didn't really have exact dates, and then all of a sudden, it's like, go, 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 it's happening. But I've kind of had ideas in the back of my mind of things I want to do, and like the stuff I want my mum to focus on on the two days she's in, so that the absolutely essential stuff gets done. So particularly in those early days, if I don't manage anything else, we're all right. So today is my last day in the studio full time, maybe ever. And that feels really, really scary because I've worked so, so hard to try and build Sunshine Lane and I've obviously been sharing that journey with you here on YouTube and it feels like a scary step to be like, oh, well, I'm gonna step back and I'm not gonna be able to work on the business as much anymore. And my husband, he's in traditional employment and he's taking six months off. While he's off, other people will pick his work up for him. And it's just a totally different situation. Whereas for me, I've been working as hard as I possibly can to get more money in so that I can pay my mom so that things can tick over. And unlike with maternity leave where when you're self-employed in the UK you can apply to the government for statutory maternity leave. A few years ago now they made the entitlement in the UK for leave for adoption the same as for parental leave like maternity paternity but they didn't do it for self-employment. That's the one bit that was missed. So I'm not actually entitled to any 
formal official leave. And the other obviously difficult thing is that when you're self-employed and you run your own business, if you're not here doing the hours, things don't get done. And I always knew right from the start, what I didn't want to do was just shut the doors on the business and say, well, that's it then, because I'm a mom now, because I've worked too hard to build it up. And one of the many benefits that I've always seen of being self-employed is that when you have a family, you can work it around your family and it's much more flexible. You've not got someone else telling you where you need to be, when you need to be, etc. And so in terms of family life over the longer term, I just think it will suit us much better. But obviously in the short term, it's a very, very scary step and something that I think I've had to just kind of steal myself for and tell myself it's going to be okay like you can step off the wheel for a bit the whole business isn't going to close it's not going to fall apart if you don't do any more collections for a few months the world is not going to end I'm hoping people don't just unfollow me and disappear and you know life goes on there's other aspects of running a business than just releasing a product collection every month. I've worked so hard to do lots of product collections this year knowing that there then will probably be a gap. So I was trying to front load as much as I could and that's why I've been scrambling to get my bookish collection out because my shop is full of goodies that I can be sharing with people and the bit that I always miss out is actually sharing and like marketing and promoting the products I already have. I have a really bad habit of like scrambling to put out a collection and then when that's done it's like right uh, quick on to the next one and that marketing and selling falls by the wayside and after the launch I stop telling people about it so it's gonna be a good experiment actually as to can I pull right back and in the little pockets of time that I have, can I focus on marketing and selling the products that are already in my shop and keep a revenue coming in? So if you're interested in following that experiment, make sure you subscribe if you're not already. So today, I have a few things that I really need to get done before I go off on leave. So I have a bunch of orders to process from the second sale that I ran, from the launch of the bookish collection and from the last trade show I did, Autumn Fair, as well as other wholesale orders that have been coming in. So my mom helpfully went through earlier this week and made a list of items that I manufacture in-house that we don't have in stock that are needed for orders. So first up today, what I need to do is some sublimation items. So I need to do some of my hanging decorations, some of my mirrors, and I also need to do some mugs. So I, if I can top up those three, then there are a lot of orders that can be processed while I'm off. Otherwise, it's gonna be a bit of a bottleneck and I don't want her to be waiting for me to do those. And then as other orders come in over time, once we get low on stock, I can just nip in on an evening after she's gone to bed and just top up a few things. And that's the plan. So let's go and do that now. <laughs>
So that is done. I feel good about that. So I've got a restock of mugs, mirrors and decorations. And so she can carry on with orders. And I won't need to top up for a little while. And I'm not blocking any orders that are due to go out. So next, I need to kind of carry on with things for the Cozy Bookish launch. So in my last vlog, you will have seen me launch that new collection on my website, on my Shopify store. But I need to make sure that it is on sale all the different places that I sell things before I disappear so that the orders can keep coming in and bringing money into the business. So one of the main places I still sell my products is Etsy. So I need to get all my 22, 23 cozy bookish items up on Etsy. And Etsy listings are a bit more involved in terms of things like selecting tags for your listings and all those little bits behind the scenes. And so you will have seen a few vlogs ago, I shared a tool that was helping me with my Etsy and that is Everbee. And I wanna thank Everbee for sponsoring this segment of the video. Everbee is a tool that can really help Etsy sellers, whether you are a beginner to selling on Etsy or whether you've been selling on Etsy for a while like I have. Trends change over time and the way people buy things and what they're looking for changes over time, but Everbee evolves with that and can show you what customers are looking for and how they are behaving on Etsy right as you're scrolling Etsy. It puts the information right at your fingertips. You can even check out what other shop owners are doing behind the scenes, what their top selling products are, how much they are making from those products and what keywords they're using to attract people to those listings so that you can apply the same strategies to your Etsy listings and try and boost your visibility on the platform as well as boosting your sales. So this is what I want to do today because when I was planning out my cozy bookish collection, I actually did some market research using Everbee, which you can find in a previous vlog that I will link in the description below. And I came across a reading journal that was really, really popular on Etsy. And I really want to focus on the listing for my reading journal and have a look at what I can learn using Everbee to try and bring more people to the listing for my reading journal. So once you've installed the Everbee Chrome extension, you'll see see if you hover to the left over here that their research tools pop up on the left hand side right as you are scrolling Etsy which is so so handy and I'm gonna go to the products analytics tool so I'm gonna type in reading journal here and then these are sorted by monthly revenue and you can see here that the top physical reading journal is generating over £7,000 a month in revenue, which is, I mean, who wouldn't love that in their <laughs> bank account every month just from one product listing? I can see there's quite a lot of digital reading journals here. So I'm gonna go to filters and then in product name, I'm gonna exclude digital. And that's gonna help me focus just on physical reading journals and remove the digital listings because obviously a completely different set of customers is gonna be looking at that that isn't relevant for my reading journal necessarily. So I can now open some of these top listings and it will open a snapshot on the side here and straight away you can see the estimated monthly revenue, the total sales for this item. You can see the keywords that are bringing people to this list in here. So if I click these arrows, it's gonna expand that. And the higher the keyword score, the better really. So you can see there are some key phrases here that I can make a note of and put on my listing, like bookish organization, track your reads, literary log, these are all ones I can make a note of. And then something that I like to do is if I open this listing in a new tab, I can look at this on Etsy and I can have a look around the list in itself as to why else other than the tags might this be one of the top listings that people are buying. So what do the photos look like? What are they showing? It's interesting to know that there is a video flip through, so that is something I can include. So people can see the order of the pages, they can get more of a feel for the item. They have pictures of all of the different spreads in the journal, so you can really see your way around the journal. If I look at the description, 
It's quite a lengthy description. It explains recommended ways to use each of the actual pages and the spreads in the tracker, so what they envisage you use each one for. And obviously having this longer description means that it's another way to try and bring more keywords into the page. And then if you wanted to get back to look at the keywords and things, you can actually click analyze listing right from the product page and get back to this information that we had before, where it will tell you all about this listing in particular, but also about the shop. So I'm gonna go back to my product analytics and I'm gonna look at another one. This is a digital that has snuck through, but this one is a physical reading journal. So let's open this one. So this has really nicely styled photographs. You can see that it has a mixture of real photographs as well as mock-ups. It shows you what the different spreads are within the journal. It's got a comparison of their book journals because they offer more than one. So is this something you could do, for example, if you have journals on different types of things to try and help cross sell some of your other items? In the description, again, it's quite a detailed breakdown in terms of the number of pages, what those pages are for, as well as the overall idea for the journal. And then again, if we look at the keywords, you can see there are some really useful ones here, like A5 letterbox gift is something that I might not have thought to include, but actually it is a lovely letterbox gift. Reading Log UK is, again, something I might not have thought of. Book Review Journal, Reading Log, Book Tracker Log. It's really, really handy to see the types of things that are bringing people to these listings. So as well as using this for my wildflower collection listings, I've also been chipping away at trying to update some other listings behind the scenes. And if I go to my stats on Etsy for this year, you can see that from July when I started using Everbee, there has been a rise in visits, there's been a rise in orders, and it's interesting to see that there are actually less people visiting my product pages compared to this time last year, but more people converting through to orders. So that tells me that it's bringing the right people to look at these listings, and so I'm really happy with that. I'm happy with how things are looking, and hopefully things continue to go on an upward trajectory. So if you want to sign up to Everbee and give it a try for yourself, they actually have a free plan that is free forever which has some limits on the amount of keyword research you can do in one go but it can give you a lot of information that can be helpful in bringing people to your Etsy shop and give you a chance to try it for free and see how you get on with it. So if you want to give Everbee a try for yourself I'd love it if you could click the link in the description below to let them know that I sent you over to say hi and let me know how you get on with it and whether you notice any change in your Etsy analytics. So I've spent a good couple of hours working on my Etsy listings and I'm happy to say that that job is now done. My full bookish collection is up on Etsy for new customers to discover me over there. And so that is a really big job ticked off the list before I go off on my break. So now I have another big job to do, which is if you've watched my last couple of vlogs, you'll know that I took part in the super second sale and I sold off loads of seconds items that I had hanging around in my studio and I'm pleased to say that lots of you snapped up some absolute bargains. And during that time, I also launched my cozy bookish collection. So I have a ton of orders waiting to be processed. Currently have 47 open orders, which is the most I've ever had in one go. So I need to get these orders organized and I'm gonna start pulling the seconds items together for these orders ready for my mom to pack to make the process simpler for her on Monday. So let me show you what I'm working with. So I decided I've kept up this temporary table, which I was using as one of the like mock-up tables for Southwest Planner Club. And before I took it down, what I thought I would use it for is, I've laid all the orders out in alphabetical order and so I've paired up the ones where people have ordered more than once and then I'm going to go through and refund the shipping on Shopify if they will have paid double 
And then I'm going to sort out the seconds items because if I turn you around, on my middle island, I have what looks like a disorganised jumble of products, but it isn't. It's a carefully organised system of my seconds items that makes sense to me and things are in piles depending whether they're B grade, C grade, etc. However, I'm not expecting my mum to know how to translate this and understand what I've laid out where. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep the orders that have got seconds items on them on this table and I'm going to start moving over the items so we've got different piles for people's orders that mum can then pack and add on any additional items from the new collection or from the shop in general and then when she comes in on Monday she can get on with that. So that's my plan now. So I actually ran out of room on the table, but you can see that I have lots of piles of seconds waiting to be packed up with their packing slips. I've not put the new stuff out, I've just put the second stuff out and then mum can add whatever's on the packing slips from the new collection and existing collections in with the seconds and get things packed up. And then there's another pile of orders which is just from the new and existing collection that is over on the packing desk that she can work through as well. I can't really believe that with everything I've already got ready to pack, I still have all of this left, including like loads of pins, loads of bullet journals, so, so many things, which is just ridiculous really. I've just accumulated so much over time but I'm happy that I've made a big dent in what has been kind of hanging around and it can go out to some good homes to be loved and used as intended. And there's a few more days yet left of the second sale so we'll see what happens with that. Even though the second sale will have ended by the time this video goes live, I think I'm actually going to leave my second bullet journals up on the website because I have quite a few. I was really really sad about these because I was waiting so excitedly for them to arrive for ages. And then when they came, quite a few of the boxes had been split and it meant that the items, like the journals, were no longer in 100% pristine condition. So I didn't really feel comfortable charging full price for them. However, when I tell you the damage is minimal, like if you look on this one, if it'll focus, there's just a tiny little dink in that top corner like that you would probably never notice and I've reduced them to £14. So they're an absolute, absolute bargain. So, so that you have actually got the opportunity to buy these, having now seen them in the vlog, I'm going to leave these live and I will put a link in the description so that you can go and check them out because they are such a gorgeous foiled journal and it's such a shame that these ones have just been sat unloved in a cupboard when there's barely 
anything wrong with them. I just can't charge full price for them because they're not 100% perfect. So I just wanted to mention that. So I think I'm pretty much there in the jobs that I really wanted to get finished today. I did want to do more filming today than I've managed to get done, like for this and other videos. However, for some reason, on the one day that I really needed to film, the people in the house behind decided it was a great day to be chopping down trees with a chainsaw all day. So that's put me on my last nerve, which is not the mood I wanted to be in today. But there we go, you just have to deal with these things. I'm going to be nipping in and out, doing odd bits of Instagram posts and things on my phone in between naps, etc. But this is going to be a really weird change of pace for me. And any mums who do this, I know a lot of small business owners who are mums because it fits really well with family life. I would love to know your tips if you've got tips to leave me in the description even if it's just a bit of solidarity because it's definitely scary times. It's scary knowing that we are also going to have a fully fledged human that is on the move as opposed to like a newborn where we could perhaps even though we'd have a lot of sleepless nights ease ourselves into what on earth goes into parenting but I cannot wait for it I cannot wait for this next challenge and I'm excited for this next chapter of life evolving and running the business alongside having a family and all that that will entail. I've got some really, really exciting content lined up for while I'm off. So do stick around for that because I'm still going to be here. Like the video, comment, subscribe, do all the things that help this channel because it's another thing that I absolutely love to do. I've had a little bit of a dip in views recently but I've just been focusing on the fact that I love making YouTube videos and showing behind the scenes. And I've actually been having a lot more fun doing it now that I've taken the pressure off a bit. So I think that's probably going to be a key thing across the board moving forward is remember why I'm doing it and try not to be just a ball of stress. And again, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you for supporting me on this journey. Like I said, it's a new chapter. Things are going to look very different, but I'm excited to share that with you too and how things change, how I manage the changes, how I cope with it all or don't and what has to change and how I approach it moving forward because it's all about to change in the best way so with that said send me all the luck you can muster I'm gonna need it I am rightfully worried not worried like just slightly terrified as you would be alongside being massively excited so I'm gonna disappear I'm gonna take my laptop do some video editing lock up my studio for the day and I will see you very soon in another video and I look forward to reading in all your sage wisdom and advice. Take care everyone. Bye!